Good evening and thanks for joining us on your Friday night. I'm Sophie Erber. President Joe Biden along with Vice President Kamala Harris traveling to Atlanta, Georgia today following Tuesday's deadly shooting there. The two meeting with community leaders and lawmakers to talk about the growing anti-Asian sentiment being seen in some parts of the country. ABC's Elwin Lopez has the details now in our top story at 5. President Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris arriving in Atlanta this afternoon to meet with Asian American community leaders and state lawmakers. The trip initially planned as a tour to promote the $1.9 trillion COVID relief package, but the administration changing course in the wake of Tuesday's deadly rampage. This newly released surveillance video appears to show the suspect, 21-year-old Robert Aaron Long, walking into this spa where the first shooting took place. After he walks out, police are seen rushing in. Just hours before this moment, investigators say he purchased the gun used in the attacks. I'm not sure about any mental illness. All we do know is that he did purchase the gun on the day of the incident. Eight victims killed in three separate locations. Six of the victims, Asian women. The Cherokee County Sheriff was asked if a hate crime charge is being considered. We're going to allow the evidence to lead us into a logical conclusion, and if that is a part of it, then certainly we'll entertain that. As he attended a memorial for the victims, vowing this. We're committed to a, a, a solid case here and a, and a conviction. From coast to coast, a growing number of tributes to the victims and in support of the Asian American community. I don't know what's going to kill me first. COVID or racism? Lawmakers taking up anti-Asian violence Thursday on Capitol Hill. What happens right now and over the course of the coming months will send a message for generations to come as to whether we matter. Growing tributes for the victims at this spot behind me, the one across the street and the one just north of the city. Elwin Lopez, ABC News, Atlanta. Here in Siouxland, flags are flying at half-staff in remembrance of those killed in Atlanta. Iowa, Nebraska, and South Dakota's governors have all ordered flags to be lowered until sunset on Monday. This is in conjunction with President Joe Biden's proclamation made Thursday to lower all United States flags to half-staff for that same length of time. And here in Siouxland, a child is dead and another is injured after a vehicle struck the back of a bus in Inwood, Iowa. Both the driver and passenger of the car were juveniles. The passenger, a third grader at West Lyon Community Schools, was killed. The 17-year-old driver is being treated at a Sioux Falls hospital. Meanwhile, district officials confirm all students in the bus are safe tonight. And one person is now dead after what authorities are calling a hit and run in northwestern Iowa. That incident took place about two miles west of Sibley on 170th Street. The Osceola County Sheriff's Office was alerted with a 911 call around 9 o'clock Thursday night. The caller reported a body lying in the roadway. The Iowa State Patrol is now involved in this investigation. You can follow the updates to this case posted on our website. That's SiouxlandProud.com or the free KCAU 9 mobile news app. Vaccine eligibility is expanding in the state of Nebraska. Starting on Monday, every Nebraskan age 50 or older can schedule an appointment. What we're doing is asking local health departments to focus 90% of the vaccines on that group 50 to 64, and again, still prioritizing older people. And then they can use that 10% to focus on folks who have underlying health conditions. This marks the state's entrance into Phase 2A, something the Dakota County Health Department did just yesterday. Also starting Monday, South Dakotans that are in Group Phase 1E will be eligible for their shot. That includes essential workers and critical infrastructure industries, meaning those who work in the restaurant industry can also sign up. Meanwhile, Iowa is planning to make everyone eligible for the vaccine starting on April 5th. The United States has cleared President Joe Biden's goal of injecting 100 million coronavirus shots more than a month before his target date of his 100th day in office. The nation is now administering roughly 2.5 million shots per day. The president telling reporters today that he might have to double his goal. His comments come as the United States is on pace to have enough vaccine to cover the entire adult population just 10 weeks from now.
Meanwhile, social distancing recommendations for schools are being relaxed tonight. U.S. health officials now say students can sit as close as three feet to each other in the classroom. The new Centers for Disease Control and Prevention guidelines announced today signals the agencies turn away from that six-foot distancing recommendation. That had for some schools to remove desks, stagger scheduling, and take other steps to keep kids apart. Most of city homeowners will be seeing an increase in their property tax assessments this year, and so will area businesses. According to the Sioux City Assessor, residential value changes will be varying based on location, but the average increase will be roughly 8.5%. Commercial properties can expect a minimum 6.5% increase. Multi-residential properties are looking at about a 27% spike. City officials say low interest rates, reduced inventory, and high home sale prices are to blame. Coming up tonight at 6 and 10, KCAU 9's Mallory Smith tells us how one homeowner is reacting and find out which neighborhoods will be affected the most. Time now for our first check on the weather. Chief, Meteorolo Chief Meteorologist Scott Larson is standing by for us. And Scott, what a beautiful way to end out the week and start the weekend because uh, we saw the sun all day and temperatures rising. Good to see that sunshine again out there, Sophie. Warmer temperatures as well as we were able to hit those highs in the 50s around most of Siouxland this afternoon. The high temperature in Sioux City at 55. Same story in Yankton, 54 for Denison and Carroll, and just a little cooler in Esterville at 48. Tonight we should see our temperatures fall to about the freezing mark a good idea for this weekend roll out the grill we are going to have some great weather to kick off the spring season spring officially starting at 4 37 tomorrow morning highs in the 60s both saturday and sunday rain arrives early next week we'll have more information about that coming up in a few minutes sophie all right thanks scott well, cases of missing and murdered indigenous people continue to haunt the state of South Dakota, but now the state's attorney general's office plans to hire a full-time employee specifically dedicated to investigating them. Governor Kristi Noem is expected to sign this legislation creating that position. The MMIP office will be funded through grants from foundations and the federal government. That's according to the news release on the topic. According to the AP, there are roughly 102 missing South Dakotans. About 68% are indigenous, even though Native Americans make up just 9% of the state's population. A judge says he will not delay or move the trial of a former Minneapolis police officer. That officer charged in George Floyd's death, but he will allow limited evidence from a 2019 arrest. Attorneys also seated a 13th juror today, leaving just one more needed now for trial. Jury selection was halfway complete last week in former officer Derek Chauvin's trial when the Minneapolis City Council announced it had unanimously approved a $27 million settlement with George Floyd's family. Chauvin's attorney called the timing of the announcement deeply disturbing and said it jeopardized Chauvin's chance for a fair trial. A county judge called the timing, quote, unfortunate, but today declined to delay that trial. A global semiconductor shortage and a February winter storm have combined to force Ford to build F-150 pickup trucks without certain computers. The company says the pickups will be held at factories for a number of weeks and then shipped off to the dealerships once those computers are available and, of course, quality checks can be done. The move is the latest ripple effect from the global semiconductor shortage, which earlier this week forced Honda and Toyota to announce production cuts at some of its North American factories. Ford's move is likely to tighten the inventory of F-Series pickup trucks. That is the top-selling vehicles in America. Nebraska lawmakers advancing a bill tonight to extend free press projections for student journalists and for their advisors. This comes after several incidents where school administrators censored school newspaper articles that were deemed too controversial or even unflattering. Lawmakers gave the measure first-round approval on a 28-15 to 15 vote. This after an eight-hour filibuster. The bill applies to students at public high schools, colleges, and also state universities. A Bishop Heelan High School student is helping those that need it the most. Sophomore Brian Regino partnered up with the Boys and Girls Club of Siouxland and Bishop Heelan to put together a food and clothing drive. This is where people can donate items to those in need. Everything will be given out to the Gospel Mission. You can learn about his motivation to put this drive together right now in our digital exclusive story. Post it online at SiouxlandProud.com or on the story on the KCAU 9 News app. You could say it was an oh dear kind of moment when a deer found itself caught in somebody's fence. 
how police officers came to the rescue coming up. And for the start of spring, we'll see temperatures bounce upward into the 60s. It's going to be warm and breezy out there. The rain looks to return by Sunday evening, and there could be some formidable amounts of it by the time that it wraps up next week. More coming up next, right after the break. You're watching KCAU 9 News with Sophie Erber and meteorologist Marcus Beasley. This is KCAU 9 News at 5. lasting into Monday and Tuesday and temperatures will be cooler next week but fairly seasonal the typical high is right around 50 and we should be dancing around that mark with highs in the 40s and 50s a chance of rain returns next Saturday another beautiful picture to share with you now this is of a snack and blue jay enjoying some peanuts there in Dakota Dunes thank you very much to Arlene Milbrot for sharing that picture with us if you have a great picture that you want to Share with Siouxland, just jump onto our website, SiouxlandProud.com. Go down to send us your photos. That is an amazing shot she captured. He is mid-bite. Well, I want to know what <laughs> camera she used. Starting to hear <laughs> some more of those birds out and about, some more chirping happening as uh, those warmer temperatures are here. Sign of the season. All right, That's thanks right. a lot, Scott. Well, it's another bird story for you. The bird nest, possibly with the most viewers in the country. It's home to a bald eagle waiting for her eggs to hatch and waiting along with her, a group of students. What they're learning, coming up. But first, deer often find themselves in sticky situations, but for one lucky little fawn, rescue was right around the corner. We'll show you next. We have another question uh, from our Facebook viewers. They wanted to know when... Tim Seaman and Sophie Erber got answers to your questions about vaccinations on KCAU 9's latest town hall. If you missed it, watch at SiouxlandProud.com. This is KCAU 9 News. Welcome back. Everyday police officers get sent on dozens of calls, all different. But as Peggy Gallick explains, some are more heartwarming than others. A few weeks ago, officers John McCartney and Dominic Pendleton were dispatched to home on East 142nd Street in Cleveland. I don't he wrapped around that cable wire. And as this Cleveland police body camera video shows you, the two officers had a true Oh dear, moment. Oh, his leg just ran up. Just to confirm that these aren't uh, electrical. I don't think they are, but I'm not. They could be old phone lines. They also noticed a cut on the deer's leg and weren't sure if they were going to be able to save the animal. Yeah, that leg, she's going to have to go down. Wow. Really? But then backup arrived. No lights and sirens, just a whistle. And Officer John Grisanek had a plan. She's here to help. You got a, you got a pair of, oh, that's a little baby. You got a pair of cutters? The three wasted no time in figuring out the best way to help the deer. I'm going to take it down to the ground if you can cut it. I got a feeling you've done this before. Who, me? Yeah. I just watched a video on it. We're going to help you out, buddy. Relax. The officers then put the plan into action. Come on, baby. Calm down. It's all right. You want to cut this in? It's okay. All right, buddy. While the one officer held the deer down, the other cut the wire off the deer's leg. Come down, buddy. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. We got you. And seconds later, come on, slow down. This way. The deer was free. He gone. All right, ma'am. And the officers were off to their next call. Contact complete. Contact. Contact complete. A good ending there. Well, atop a tree in California sits a bald eagle's nest, and with it, a camera giving the world a front row seat. My one class is eager to witness these eggs hatch next. It's a bit of all good news that people are watching around the world. We're talking about the hatching of two bald eagle chicks in Big Bear, California. The whole process is being captured on video. Leo Stallworth shows you how schools are now using it to teach students about nature. The Big Bear Valley camera trained on this bald eagle mother protecting her egg. Fifth and sixth grade students at Santa Susana Elementary School in Simi Valley enthralled with watching the camera right in their classroom, studying the nesting habits of one of nature's most majestic birds. Jackie sits on the nest at night because she has to generate more heat so the eggs stay warm, and especially because they're at a high altitude. While the bald eagle is no longer considered an endangered species, they are still protected under multiple federal laws and regulations. Their nests and roost sites are all protected. 
the kiddos in this classroom joining nature lovers, taking in the breathtaking beauty of getting a front row seat, watching this mother eagle prepare her eggs to hatch. My favorite thing about watching them is the little baby eggs that when they're going to hatch. We've just been watching them. We do research on them. We've done some writing. The kids drew pictures of them. And so we've had a good time with them. They're just so excited to make sure that those eggs are going to hatch eventually. So it's been a wonderful experience for them. The kiddos have been able to use their skills in math, reading, and writing to try to pinpoint when the eggs might hatch. Well, I think we've been able to like bring a lot of different parts of the curriculum in through the eagles. And um, we've done some math with figuring out, oh, you know, definitely. when yeah. they're going to be born and, um, and the writing, like I said, and research. This is one lesson these students will remember for a lifetime. Taking a live look outside now in downtown Sioux City, Scott returns with one more check on your weekend forecast. Don't go away. Before we wrap up at 5, we want to preview what's coming up on your KCAU 9 News at 6 when Tim Seaman joins me here. On Wednesday, the IRS announced that it is extending the federal tax deadline to May 17th, giving people an additional month. State governments continue looking at their options as well. We'll be looking at the options for you after World News Tonight. Also tonight, Nebraska is set to expand the pool of people eligible for a COVID-19 vaccine to those over the age of 50. They'll soon be able Able to sign up and get their shot. Find out what Governor Pete Ricketts has to say about this expanded operation coming up tonight at 6 as phase 2 opens up on Monday. We're also looking forward to seeing more of a good sign in the weather department because uh, today kind of ushered in what really feels like spring, although I know it doesn't <laughs> technically start yet. Right, we're still about uh, 12 hours <laughs> away from spring officially starting, Sophie, but we're getting close and it definitely felt like it outside today. Tonight we'll have a low temperature of 33 under clear skies and tomorrow we're on pace for a high of 64 in the afternoon. Lots of sunshine. The wind is going to be kind of bothersome, though, with some gusts near 40 miles per hour. Here's a check of the 9 on 9 forecast. Increasing clouds into our Sunday and a pretty good rain chance arriving on Sunday night, lasting through Monday and Tuesday as we cool things off to seasonal highs in the 40s and 50s next week. Where we should be for this time of year. That's right. All right, thanks, Scott. Thank you for joining us. We'll both see you back here tonight at 6. Until then, have a great night, everyone.